Hello guys, in this class now, let's now talk about the protozoa. Last class, we talked about the classification of animals. So let's now focus on protozoa. Protozoa, let me ask you, are they vertebrate or invertebrate? We said they are what invertebrate. And this will be our lesson two. Let's start. How do we introduce a protozoa? First of all, we said that animalia is divided into two, right? Either you are invertebrate or you are what vertebrate. Under the invertebrate, we say we have the discipline amia. This PDA is called your protozoa. This second P is called your polythera. This one is called your collaterata. This is called your blatiamite. This is your nematode, your annelid, your mollusca, your arthropod, and your echidna matter, right? While under your vertebrae, we have the param, which we have the, well, the Pisces, the amphibians, the, the Pisces, the amphibians, the reptiles, the apes, and the world number. True or false? Now, we are trying to trace now. This is the first guy we are tracing in this class, which is your word, this first P. This one, yeah, is what we call the word, the protozoa. Do you understand that? Now, see another the protozoa again. Let's still give that. Take note that the word pro means first, and the word zoan means animal. Just the way we have fighter for plants. Fighter is for plants. So the word pro means first, the word zoan means what animal. Do you, you understand that? These guys are the lowest in the animal kingdom. We just explained that they are lowest and they are microscopic. They are the lowest in the animal kingdom and they are microscopic. If you follow the invertebrate, they are the first guys. Are you seeing that? So let me ask you a simple question. Protozoa, are they eukaryotic or prokaryotic? We yes. Let me what's your answer. Are they prokaryotic or eukaryotic? If you don't get that, I will blow you. From our previous classification, we know that everything about animals are eukaryotic. That means they have true nucleus. Why? Because we said that Light that into the air, prokaryotic or eukaryotic, right? Under the eukaryotic, we have the, the protista, the mycota, that the fungi. We have the plantain, we have what animal. So these guys are the first animals, and they are the lowest in animal kingdom, and they are microscopic. Do you understand that? They are unicellular. Unicellular means they have one cell. Or we can say they are single cell, or they are one cell organism. So every member of the protozoa are unicellular. That is, they carry out their life processes as a cell. They, they, but matter of saying the cell is the basic structure and functional unit of life. And to see the cell in microscope, that's why we said these guys are microsco microscopic. Because they carry out all the activities just as a cell. Have you seen that? My one said they are the lowest in the animal kingdom, they are microscopic. And they are either unicellular, you said that is the same thing as a single cell or one cell. And we said that one cell is just to carry out all the activities as living organism. You now you have liver, you have a respiratory system, you have digestive system, you have a respiratory system. Then for we all these processes are carried out by that cell that they exist as. So one cell is responsible for carrying out all their living world organisms. Do you understand? Give me three things about protozoa. One, they are the lowest in the animal kingdom. They are in the cellular or single cell, one cell. And that one cell is responsible for carrying out all the activities as living organisms. Now, we said that the, the, under the invertebrate, under the invertebrate, we have the PCP namia, right? The first P there, we said the protozoa. The second one there is called the porifera. The second one there is called the word the collaterata, the platyamide, the nematoda, the anelida, the mollusca, arthropod, and the word jetnet. But now we can divide this into two. The first guy here is what we call the protozoa. Now, who is the protozoa? The first person. All others are called metazoa. The word meta means after. That is, they came after. Look at it. So, from here, this we are called metazoa. So, they just hear metazoa. These are invertebrate except the protozoa. If you miss any question as a medical student, I will look for you and I will blow you because we have taught everything following the syllabus and their past question will be hitting them. So if you are reading medicine, you are going to read medicine, you want to read um, uh, dentistry, nursing, radiography, med lab, pharmacy, you are supposed to be boiling. This thing is supposed to be in you. Hold on a bit. The complete series of classes, right, as far as your syllabus is concerned regarding your jam awaek, everything has been covered in details for you in the LearnLift app. And guess what? The sweet part is that you have access to your CBT, right? You have access to your video lessons, you have access to your notes, you have access to your past questions. Everything from the beginning to the end is directly in the LearnLift app for you. So all you have to do is just mark down to Play Store or App Store and download the LearnLift app where you follow all your classes from the beginning to the end. A quick one before we move, let's get back to class. Enjoy. Are you seeing that? So, in vertebrates, we said they are called the spinamia. We said the first that you remove protozoa, which is the first, pro means first, and zoa means anima. The rest after protozoa are called metazoa, and the word meta means after. 
after. Are you seeing that? So these are the after animals, after the protozoa. The word zoan, of course, zoan means what? Animals. So we see it on that statement. We say that after the protozoa, the rest are called your what? Your metan zoan. Are you seeing that? Now let's now talk about who are the representing members of the protozoa. Of course, the first guy there is the amoeba. Bye bye, welcome. You can see the amoeba, right? After that, the next guy there is what we call the word the paramecium. Are you seeing that? After the paramecium, we have what we call the word the euglena. Now, Clamadominus 2 is part of this. Are you seeing that? But I didn't actually put it here, but it's part of this. So, take note that we have the word the trypanosoma. We also have the word the plasmodium. We're going to talk what trypa trypanosoma is and the plasmodium. Trypanosoma is what causes sleeping sickness, right? Found in the blood. And plasmodium 2 is what causes what? Malaria. So, we can say apectipi. Now, if you want to introduce that, you can put your clamidomonas here. Clamidomonas 2 is part of this. Now, clamidomonas, I'm going to, when I'm, well, I didn't actually put that because for your level, you don't actually, we can't say for your level, which is a put to but as you grow in 100 level, if you go to 100 level class, hopefully you can switch plant to 100 level class, right? If you go to 100 level class, you can see that clamidomonas is also part of what, of animals, because under your, your, your mastigophorus, we have two types. We have what we call the, the zygo mastigino and the phyto mastigina. The word zygo talk about your, the word phyto talk about plants, while the word ma uh, zoo mastigina talk about animals. So, and mastigophorus, we have your word, your clamidomonas. So I will not want to talk about that and for the level you don't need that, but just know. So we say we have the word, the report the representing members, we have the word, the amoeba, we have the paramecium, we have the euglena, we have the trypanosoma, and we have the word the plasmodium. Do you understand that? Now, if you say you understand that, what practically look at it? This is a female adopted mosquito. It is the vector that carry your word. This is plasmodium. Plasmodium is found in blood. And what if uh, function of blood? Plasmodium is what causes what malaria. We have the type of malaria. We have the malaria. Um, we have the plasmodium malaria. Plasmodium vivas. Plasmodium will. Plasmodium wills. Plasmodium passiferum. Are you seeing that plasmodium is the constant one that causes what? Uh, malaria, malaria, malaria. So, but we have, this is caused by, this guy by vector. What's that vector called? Femia nopheles mosquito. Femia nopheles mosquito is the vector. Host is what? The host is what? Man. Are you seeing that? Host is man. And this is human blood. You can see this is the plasmodium. Near the plasmodium, this is the plasmodium. And the other one we talked about here, we also talk about your, your uh, trypanosoma, which is called carried by what? Who is the vector? There's a fly. The fly carries your word trypanosoma. You can see it in blood too. Trypanosoma in blood. A trypanosoma causes your word sleeping sickness. So all these are types of your word, your protozoa. We said we have your amoeba, your paramecium, your iglina. We said clamidomina is supposed to be there. We already classified clamidomina as under RG. Do you understand? Because vulvos. And I also went for that to talk about your tri trypanosoma, which uh, is there's a fly. I also talk up which is carried by say fly. Say the fly is the vector. The man is the host is what is man. I'll talk about plasmodium. Female the plasmodium mosquito is the vector. And man, they work. Now, what are now the characters of protozoa? First, characters of protozoa. Number one, they are unicellular organisms or one cell or single cell. Unicellular organism or one cell or single cell. We'll talk about that when we're introducing. Number two, take note that these guys, their locom they loc locomotion is by flagella, cilia, and pseudopodia. And where by using pseudopodia, paramecium uses your cilia, your euglena uses what flagella. So, how do you get that look? What you by uh, flagella, cilia, and what pseudopodia? Number three, take note that they have contractile vacuum, which help to for what osmosis regulation. When we talk about osmosis regulation, it helps to remove excess water, water. So, number one, they are one cell, unicellular or single cell. Locomotion is by what flagella, cilia, and what pseudopodia. I would say they have contractor valve which help them to remove what excess water. It's called osmo revolution. Do you understand? Number four, some of them are free living. That means they move from one place to another. Some are parasitic. Of course, that means they depend on other they depend on other organism and they can cause death to the to the organism because parasites feed on other organisms, right? And some others are what mutualistic. That means they benefit both are what benefiting. So either they are one cell or cellular organisms. We say their mode of locomotion is by what flagella, cilia, and pseudopodia. They have contracted back for host for evolution. You're going to see that to remove excess water. And so they are free living, that means they move from one place to another. Some attached, for example, now, we want to talk about parasitic now. Uh, your plasmodium, it stays in human blood because malaria is a parasite. Are you seeing that? We also have a word, your mutualistic. Now, 
What are now, uh, we have talked about four characters of Pudzua. Let's now go to the fifth one. Take note that what's their mode of nutrition? They could be autotrophic. Mode of nutrition could be autotrophic. That means holophytic. Now, when we talk about autotrophic, that means they manufacture their own food. Take note that holotrophic, autotrophic is also called holophytic. The word phyta means plants. So they are holophytic. Now, what are the examples of when we talk about um, they can be holophytic? For example, like your euglena. Euglena has chlorophyll. So it also has uh, eye spots, even your, your chromadominas. Chromadominas has chlorophyll. It also has eye spots. I showed you when we were talking about fungi. Have you seen that? Now, sometimes they feed on other organisms. Sometimes because they have your, your uh, they see the autotrophy, because they have chlorophyll, they can manufacture their own food using what photosynthesis. So that process is what you call your what, your autotrophic food or food nutrition. Yeah, they manufacture their own food using uh, sunlight that is using the process called photosynthesis. Now also take note that some have under what to call what heterotrophic. Of course, if you don't have chlorophyll, you cannot manufacture their own food. You have to depend on other what, organisms. They feed on other organisms. And we call that heterotrophic, also called what holozoic. For autotrophic, autotrophic is also called holophytic. Take note, autotrophic also called holophytic, while heterotrophic is also called your what your holozoic. We also have saprophytic, where they feed on dead, decay uh, materials. Are you seeing that? That process also called your what saprophytic. They feed on dead, decay materials for for food. We also have what to call your what your so, uh, sporozoic. This occurs in things like your plasmodium. And things like your, uh, like your trypanosoma, they stay in blood. So because they swim in the blood, they depend on the blood. They suck fluid from the blood. We call that sporozoic mode of what, nutrition. So what are the four modes of nutrition that can occur in protozoa? Number one, autotrophic, also called your word, your holozoic. Number two, we have what to call your word, your heterotrophic, also called your word, holozoic. While we have saprophytic, we have your word, your sporozoic. Number one, autotrophic, also called holophytic. Number two, we have your heterotrophic, also called your word holozoic. We have saprophytic, and we have our sporozoic. Now, we're going to talk more on nutrition, which will be our next chapter. Nutrition is our next chapter. We are now going to expose on autotrophic, heterotrophic, sporozoic, and so on and so forth. Do you understand that? The this feature is that your protozoa can reproduce asexually and sexually. They can reproduce asexually and sexually. Now, we'll talk about asexually. There are three. Number one, we have what you call your binary fission. We have your multiple fission and we have your what? Your body. So we have your binary fission, multiple fission, and your what? Body. In binary fission, the organism split, split into two. In multiple fission, it splits into many. That one occurs during unfavorable world condition. And body, where a body breaks up. We're going to talk about all this. So what are the three uh, types of asteroid production? In protozoa, we have your your binary fusion, multiple fusion, and your body. Why? Under your sexual now, they are just two. Either by conjugation or by what? By autogamy. Either by conjugation or by what? Autogamy. Paramecium does that. I just think that paramecium undergo um, conjugation as well as your what? Autogamy. So these are the six scatters. Can you close down the six scatters of protozoa? Number one, yes, they are single cell, one cell. Number two, Went for that to talk about that some of them are free living, right? Number three, we said the other go uh, the trophic mode of nutrition. We talk about their locomotory organ, which is by flagella. We talk about their reproductive system, right? And so on and so forth. Do you understand that? If you say you understand that, let's take one or two past questions. Jam 1985, question two. The question says that which of the following group of animals are flagella and cilia found? Where do you find this flagella and cilia? A C flatworms, B C annelids, C C collaterata. They talk about protozoa. So we say that mode of locomotion is by cilia, your flagella, and your what your pseudopodia. So that should be what protozoa. And option here talk about your what your nematode. Of course, option E is wrong, C is wrong, D is wrong. The correct answer is your what protozoa. So they are. Organisms that use flagella and cilia is found in your world. Put this back. Let's see the next question. Jam 1993, question 22. The question says that members of the phylum protozoa use the contractor vacuum for what? Among their functions, we talk about that they have contractor vacuum used for dash. A self to remove excess food. B talk about for movement. C talk about for digestion. C talk about to remove excess of water. Now, excess food is food vacuum. 
But when we talk about uh, removal of water, we're using what contractor water vacuum. So it cannot be A, it cannot be B, it cannot be C. Are you seeing that? To remove excess food for movement, pseudopodia, digestion, pseudopodia, to remove excess water, you know that the answer becomes your what? Your contractor back, which is fine and protein, and making up it to become your answer. We'll just take two questions in just introduction to protozoa. In our next class, we'll now go for that. To what are the members of protozoa? Talk about your amoeba, your paramecium, your glina. We're going to talk about them one after the other. There are more past questions in note for just two so that we can move faster. In our next class, we'll go for that to talk about your word and web back proof, and that will be our next three. I hope you understand that. I'll see you in the next class. But for now, peace out. Hope you've enjoyed this class. Guess what? To follow up for more classes, just download the Learn Lift app, whether on Play Store or App Store, and then follow up your classes. You must do extremely well. I'll see you in class. Bye-bye.